Fish are hungry. They're growing. Look how big those things are getting. A lot of little baby channel cats right there. Most of them are probably six, seven. Some of them may even be up to eight inches long by now. They're growing. I can tell just by the last week or so, there's some of them really starting to fill out pretty good. These things will definitely be ready to catch and eat in the spring next year. Feeding them two scoops at this time right now. And they will, uh, there's one of our big breeders right there. We won't catch them out. If we do catch them, we release those. There's probably, I'm guessing, maybe a, I don't know if there would be a hundred in there, 75 to a hundred maybe, uh, baby channel catfish. These were actually hatched out last year. They were just little bitty tiny things that you could barely tell that they was a catfish when I first identified them. Usually uh, channel catfish won't breed in a farm pond, but if the conditions are right and we have like cement blocks laid in the bottom in here, and that wasn't the reason that we put those in there. Uh, but they're using those cement blocks, I would assume, or some just big giant rocks that we have in there. Not big giant rocks, big uh, 20, 30 pound rocks maybe. But I'm thinking that they're uh, backing up into those cement blocks and laid eggs because they do breed in here for sure i haven't seen any babies of this year uh small ones like they've hatched off but the the decrease in bluegill has been tremendous hardly any baby bluegill in here and i know it's from the these channel cat feeding on them and the big breeder catfish so definitely gotta get these caught out next year the majority of them anyway and then that way uh, the balance can resume with the uh, and and there's bass in here. There's largemouth bass in here So when you got largemouth bass you've got too many predator fish and not enough uh, prey fish like bluegill so May have to end up even probably won't have to restock because there are big bluegill in here that are too big for even those big catfish to eat uh, Not saying they can't but I don't know. They might because they're pretty. Those catfish are pretty good size. They're probably some of those ten pounders, maybe. Just guessing. But you can see the catfish are just finishing up. I put two scoops out there, and it's gone that fast. And, and they could probably take. They're growing out really fast, just within a week, because they've been eating so he heavy and strong. And I want to continue to feed them good and strong because after this week, the temperatures are. They're predicting the temperature to start dropping a little bit. So as it gets colder, they will slow down eating. So I'm trying to get them as big as possible until then. So I'm trying to get two scoops a day to them. Right now I'm feeding them that Purina floating uh, uh, catfish food. And it's pretty high. It's like $34 a bag, 50, 50 pound bag. So two scoops, you know, it don't go very, very far. So uh, here, here's a natural solution that you can do. And it's funny that somebody had just brought this up. Uh, on one of my comments and I said hey I was just getting ready to make a video something similar to exactly what you was talking about so so what his idea was which is a good idea was they take uh, well basically you take a dead animal it can be roadside animals uh, a dead chicken anything you have and what they would do was tie it over the the pond so so what happens you can imagine within a couple of days the flies are going to lay eggs like crazy and those maggots as they hatch as they work the meat and when they're done they have to burr in the ground in order to come back and hatch as a fly adult fly there is no ground so they land in the water therefore landing in the water they're fish food that is a great idea now what i do and i've done this uh, for years for chickens and it's based on the same principles. What we do, we have a bucket. Use any size bucket you want, a two gallon, five gallon, the bigger the better. And what you do, you start off, I, I'm just gonna explain it, I'm not gonna demonstrate it because I don't have anything to put in it now. But what you do, you drill holes all through this bucket, top and bottom. 
you make sure there's plenty of holes, a lot of holes. You can't really put too many in it. It's not going to hurt. So what you do, now this will work also for chickens. Primarily that's what it was for, was chickens. But it would work great for a pond fish as well. So what you do, you start off, you put your little bit, little bit of hay or straw in the bottom. Or grass clippings will work. Uh, and then on top of that, you put either scrap meat that you have from butchering fish. Uh, when you clean your fish, the guts and the heads. Uh, if you butcher a chicken, whatever's left over, put it in that bucket. Or if you have a chicken just die, stick it in that bucket. Put hay on top of it. Now what that hay does, or grass clippings or straw, it acts as a carbon filter. So what it does, it, it really, really keeps the smell down. And also the higher you can get it up, the less it will smell as well. So, I mean, if you put it over here on the fish dock here and somebody went to fishing, yeah, they're probably gonna smell it. But if you could extend it on a pole connected to one of those beams, one of our um, dock uh, beams or whatever you call them, piers, and put it up in the air a little bit higher, dangled over the pond, would work better because the smell would be carried out. It's harder to get to that way, but, or you could hang it, actually hang it in a tree. Hang it in a tree because we have chickens in the goat pen and they will get trained and you could drop that into another, like a pan of some sort. Uh, something that's got a hard surface where those maggots can't escape. And those chickens will learn that hanging around there, they get a free meal. Now, I used to do that in this chicken pen. I haven't used this chicken pen in a couple of years. I plan to next spring, I'm gonna restock it with a lot of chickens. And you can see how it's grown up and chickens won't permit that growth like that if you had chickens in there because they keep all that eight down. But anyway, I would hang it up in there and they, they would hang out underneath of it eating that maggots as they dropped. Fast as they dropped, they would, uh, they would pick it up. So, so that works very well if you want some uh, free fish food idea. I got a lot of other ideas about free fish food and free chicken food I'll share with you in later videos, especially when it comes season for uh, uh, different bugs. I'll, I'll show you and demonstrate how you can cause a, take a problem that exists and turn it into a, a beneficial uh, solution for you and your, your, your animals, your, either your chickens or your pond. But anyway, that's one idea from uh, Homestead Hacks. Uh, and like I said, as the bones accumulate, you occasionally have to dump those out because they'll, they'll clamp down to the bone or feathers or whatever you got left. And just keep adding to it. You wouldn't believe. And another thing this does too, a lot of people don't realize this, it cuts down the flies in your area because those flies would commit to laying eggs somewhere else if they didn't lay them here. And therefore, those eggs would have hatched out and turned into adult flies. They're not turned into adult flies. So just like the where, where I showed the, the video about putting the, the bluegill or the goldfish in the, your water containers, same way, same thing. Because instead of those mosquito larvae hatching out somewhere else in, the, in an old tire, they committed to laying them in there in that drum. Therefore, the fish eat them out and no problem. It reduces the numbers greatly. So that's just another little hint from Homestead Hacks, folks. We're trying to get our channel built up. Uh, please share these on uh, all platforms that you, that you want to, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever. Uh, we would really appreciate you helping us get them spread out. Uh, and that's about it for today. Look at the cat. Got a lot of these around. <laughs> that's about it. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Homestead Hacks.